when I really dug more into what he was saying, mm -hmm. uh, it was due to the automation and all that yeah. stuff and the data. I, was, I got to get behind this guy. <laughs> I'm, I'm involved with a lot here. I'm a, I sit on a lot of boards and commissions here. Mm -hmm. And uh, all of my meetings, I was going to them and telling everybody in there about <laughs> Andrew Yang. I was like, and this is way before anybody knew anything about yeah. this dude. I was like, man, this guy is awesome. He's amazing. Mm -hmm. I'm telling everybody. Andrew Yang, we'll talk to voters out here. The Yang staff is out here just talking to people on the streets. <laughs> we're good people. Yeah. Everyone that talks about the campaign knows we're good people. Aww. They love hearing about him. That's so um, cool. And they just don't think that he's going to be there in the end. And if yeah. we prove to them that, that he'll be there be in the end, we'll win in a landslide. Yes. It's that simple. Everyone that talks about Bernie, yeah. they're like, oh, it's hit or miss. But anyone yeah. that talks about our candidate is like, oh, yeah, love that guy. Yeah. Easily the smartest guy up there. Exactly. Can change the world. We just got to put him there. Hey guys, so I am on my way to Raleigh, North Carolina to the international airport to get my bag and I decided since I'm gonna drive an hour just to get my bag, that was in Iowa by the way, um, and I was still here in North Carolina, I'm gonna explain the whole story later, and I just figured I'm gonna drive an hour away just to get one bag, okay cool, so I can drive another hour to Canvas for Andrew Yang. So I'm going to go to South Carolina after I get my bag from Raleigh Airport and then um, I'm going to canvas for the day since I missed Yangapalooza. I want to make it up and I want to, um, I don't know, I just feel, I don't I don't feel complete because I was supposed to be at Yangapalooza this weekend. But since I'm not, just going to make up for it to, by canvassing a little earlier than I thought. And maybe that's why the universe made it so that I didn't go to Yangapalooza. I don't know, maybe this is a sign that I was supposed to start going to South Carolina now I don't know what the situation is but I'm not I'm not moping about it so I'm just making lemonade out of lemons and um, yeah so we are going to go to the airport get my bag then go to South Carolina and canvas and I might stay the night I might not I'll see what happens I don't know yet so yeah so that's an update and um, I'll see you guys later bye So I'm at the airport, going to get my bag. Um, after this, I'm going to go canvas. And I'm going to get this bag. Freedom, damn it. That's right. I'm going to stop now. All right, guys, so I'm back. I got my bag. I got my bag back, and uh, let's go to South Carolina. I'm Barrett Hurd. Barrett I'm Hurd. one of the field organizers here in South Carolina. Nice. Andrew Yang. Yes. So what are we doing? We're canvassing. Oh, I gotta show them the Andrew Yang sign. So oh my god, this is so exciting. That means we're doing good in South Carolina. So now I just want to record just the fact because there's not one sign in North Carolina, like No, so in North Carolina, like coming from where I was where I was at there, like they're mm -hmm. trying to do stuff, but also like I get on the Facebook page and they're like, oh, we're gonna start trying to phone back in Canvas. Uh -huh. But a lot of the early states haven't gotten there yet, you know? Are you okay with being on camera? Yeah. Okay. Do you have any videos? <laughs> I'm in with Andrew, all the I just gotta I ask. I don't want you guys to sue me later. Oh, yeah, I'm suing. I'm looking for <laughs> Oh my god, that's freaking awesome because that sign is pretty expensive, so. Right. <laughs> when Who's somebody has it. 
Yeah, I almost want to say hi to them. Like, what? Next thing you know, it's a volunteer. And it's I like, know. <laughs> so, an Andrew Yang sign. Oh my gosh. We're going to their house. Oh, uh, hilarious. Some of the neighbors, um, she is, uh, uh, she likes Yang, but uh, she, uh, I think she's doing some work at USC with mm -hmm. um, some other uh, candidates. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's cool. We That's are awesome. organizers. Yeah. We rent the office. He's been to all of the um, events. And yes. All right. You can reach out to him, man. We would be thrilled to help him out. He's a student, right? Yeah, and he this also would... works at um, he works at the uh, uh, the University of South Carolina Incubator. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Downtown. Oh, nice. Um, awesome. Yeah. If he needs like internship hours and stuff, uh -huh. like, we can provide that too. So yeah. if he wants to volunteer and stuff, Maybe that actually service. helps him oh, out. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. That'd be really cool. What was your name? Kevin. I'm Kevin. Hart. Kevin. Yep. Nice yep. to meet you, Kevin. Nice to meet all of you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Yeah, I hope he wins. Yeah. Seriously. Change yes. the world, man. It really <laughs> would. If you guys want to get involved, give us a call. Okay. Yeah, I appreciate thank it. you so much. That, that's so cool. Okay. Thank you. So I'm here with Jordan and he's giving me so much information like oh my god I'm learning so much so I want to have him on camera and just tell me everything he's telling me or knows all his knowledge. How long have you been doing this? Uh, I've been doing this since high school. What? Yeah. And you don't, I mean you don't look that old though. 24. Oh you're, you're young, you're yeah. like pretty just much my age. Hair. Yeah. Yeah what's up with the gray hair? It's not to work <laughs> right? Oh you're stressed <laughs> out? Okay I see what it is. Stress for say. wins you know. I know right? Okay, so I guess what should we know? It just says people that just really supports Andrew Yang. Yeah. Like, what should we do? I live in North Carolina. I felt like driving to South Carolina was, you know, what I can do for mm -hmm. the campaign. But what can other people do to, like, support the campaign and have it affect the campaign? So, if you're near a first four state, if you're near Iowa, New Hampshire, South Carolina, or Nevada, mm -hmm. drive there and help that field staff knock doors and mm. call people. Even if you can't drive there, then just phone bank remotely. Call yeah. your local office in the first four states and tell them that you want a phone bank for them. Yeah. Because it helps them. It helps someone like Barrett here. Barrett? Um, <laughs> if they call people, it helps mm -hmm. us directly talk to voters. Yes. Talking to voters directly is the number one thing we can do. Okay, good. If we talk to voters, we're more likely to, you know, change their hearts in a yeah. sense and, and educate them on Andrew Yang and why mm -hmm. it's important that we win. Uh, Andrew Yang will talk to voters out here. Yeah, like, like they're talking. Our Yang staff is out here just talking to people in the streets. <laughs> we're good people. Yeah. They, everyone that talks about the campaign knows we're good people. Aww. They love hearing about him. That's um, so cool. And they just don't think that he's going to be there in the end. And if yeah. we prove to them that, that he'll be there be in here? the end, we'll win in a landslide. Yes. It's that simple. Oh my gosh, I'm so motivated. Everyone that talks about Bernie or, or any of these they other candidates, they, yeah. they're like, oh, it's hit or miss. But anyone yeah. that talks about our candidate is like, oh yeah, love that guy. Yeah. Easily the smartest guy up there. Exactly. Can change the world. We just got to put him there. And yes. it's on us. Okay. So pretty much we need to be phone banking, not text banking. Phoning. Right? You got to phone because people can like... Oh, it's true text. though, it's true. I'll text you back later and they don't. <laughs> yes. If you call someone, it's hard to say no to somebody on the phone. It is, it is, it is. And it's even <laughs> harder when someone like comes and they're like, man, I just had a really great conversation. Like, yeah. That was a really awesome. They were really, they really feel nice. You feel, you get that personal touch, right? Yeah. Like, it's hard to say no to somebody. Like, look at these. Like, we just yeah. literally met this guy on the street. <laughs> we just met this guy in the street and he's like getting yanged. That's, and that's <laughs> what happens. Like, they talk about it. They hear how good the policies are. They hear how mm -hmm. good our candidate is. He's a genuine good guy. Exactly. And they're set. So we just got to pretty much prove that he can win because everybody already likes him. So it's not that we got to make people like him. That's it. We just got to make people think like, hey, he can win and mm -hmm. then make him win. Okay. Simple. That's all we got to do. I mean, that's not all we got to do, but that's a lot of what it's we got to do. It's a little work, but <laughs> yeah. we can do it. Yes. So. And it's fun. Like if you it go is to fun. Your, like I'm actually having fun right now. We're <laughs> giving people information, yeah. giving them the pamphlets, sign up, sign a commit to vote card. Yes. Mail it in. Help your local staff. Mm -hmm. We'll win this season. Yes, I Easy. love that. Okay. All right. Well, we're gonna keep canvassing and update you guys later. This is beautiful. Hey guys, okay, I don't know if this is good. Is that good? 
Okay, like I'm, yeah, my all my subscribers probably know you, so <laughs> <laughs> everybody in my comments kept saying your name, so I finally got him on my channel. <laughs> yeah, oh my god, this is so crazy! I can't believe this is happening. All right, so wow, I guess I'm just gonna ask some questions so, um, okay. so people are spot like to get people inspired and stuff like that. Yo, she drove three <laughs> hours to come down here to help us canvas <laughs> down here in South Carolina. Yeah, that is a real life gang gang supporter Thanks here. Thanks to them, though, they're the one who made this happen. <laughs> Okay. All right. So let's see. So I guess what got you into the whole gang gang? What got you this far? Like, what made you interested in Andrew Yang in the first place? Way back in the day, um, <laughs> <laughs> when I was, yeah. I was, you know, I've been involved with some of this politics stuff for a little while now, and I was mm -hmm. doing some um, some research on our presidential candidates. Mm -hmm. And the first person I, who I really liked was uh, Cory Booker. Oh. Yeah, he was so inspirational in his speaking, and I mean, his oratory skills were just—they were just it's crazy. True. It's crazy. So uh, I, I liked him. He was he was giving he was giving me what I needed to hear at that time. Um, mm. And then I was doing a little, you know, as I was doing more research because I'm the third vice chair of the uh, County Democratic Party here. Mm. Um, and I was doing my, my more research, and I came across this guy, uh, Andrew Yang. <laughs> and, and I came oh, across, you know. yeah, and yeah. And I was like, who is this guy, right? Yeah. So it was like, and the first thing I read was he wants to give you a thousand dollars a month. I, I was like, oh. Yeah. I can use about yeah. a month, man. So I was like, man, I got some, I got some problems going on. But when I really dug more into what he was saying, mm -hmm. uh, it was due to the automation and all yeah. that stuff and the data. And I went, I went to Walmart and I saw all the self checkout mm -hmm. lines, and I was like, man, I, was, I started putting two and two together. I said, man, there's a lot of people's jobs that are gone. Exactly. And I work in workforce development, mm -hmm. um, so I do tours at big plants and places like that. And I, so I went to Michelin, and I saw a big robotic arm that was what? like moving pallets. <laughs> I was wow. like, oh, I was like, there's a lot of jobs that's going right there. Wow. You know, and then this this was, is what put the the icing on the cake. Is I went to Walmart again at 11 o'clock one night. Mm -hmm. And it was a robot riding around Walmart, mm -hmm. literally in my community. I hope you get to see one. Yeah, I, an actual. I took a picture <laughs> of it all. Yeah, yeah, I seen a lot. An of actual people. robot riding around my riding, riding around the Walmart, mm -hmm. and I said, "Oh my god!" And I said, "You know, what, what is this robot doing?" They said it was counting inventory and cleaning oh the floors. Oh my gosh! Yeah, that's a lot of people. <laughs> I said, "I said, yo, this guy right here." I said, <laughs> "I said, I got to get behind this guy." <laughs> so I dug deep deeper into what he was saying, and then I started going to all my meetings. I'm part of the Democratic Black Caucus here mm -hmm. as well. I'm a, you know, uh, like I said, I was part of that as well. Mm -hmm. The uh, I'm part of the uh, Diversity County Recreation Commission. Mm -hmm. um, I do a lot of volunteering. I'm in, I'm involved with a lot here. I'm a, I sit on a lot of boards and commissions here. Mm -hmm. And uh, all of my meetings, I was going to them and telling everybody in there about Andrew Yang. I was like, and this is way before anybody knew anything about yeah. this dude. I was like, man, this guy is awesome. He's amazing. Mm -hmm. I'm telling everybody. And then one day, one day, my uh, my. Young Democrats uh, chair, uh, mm -hmm. Bree Spalding, she uh, called me and said, hey, uh, there's a guy who's calling us looking for Yang supporters. Yeah. And it was this guy sitting across me who just oh. got bared hurt. Yes, yeah. I heard. He told me. Yeah, so he he, he discovered me. I, but he had no, like, I was screaming. I was, because my wife was pregnant at the time. That's and I'm funny. running to the hospital parking lot screaming, like, oh, my God, dude, Yang gang wants me, man. <laughs> so... After that, it was just, you know, from there, it just kind of built up. Wow, that is so yeah. cool. Yeah, that's almost like me. I found him from The Breakfast Club. Yeah. Next thing you know, I went down the rabbit yes. hole, and the rest is history. Yeah, The Breakfast Club is what is really what solidified everything for yeah. me as well. That, that breakfast, I was like, man, this guy is talking yes. some good sense. Yes, yes, yes. Wow, okay. So that's how you found out about NGN. So how about, like, I guess the background of yourself. Like, what should we know about you Okay. that makes uh, us be like, whoa, like... <laughs> <laughs> this guy's into Andrew Yang, you know what I mean? For yeah. people who don't know you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, uh, I'm originally from uh, Los Angeles, California, uh, born and raised. Um, I, I, I'm from the 80s, the crack epidemic era. And uh, going through the, the situations of growing up when my parents were, you know, where they were both uh, addicted. Um, my father was uh, had a lot of issues going on. He did a lot of... Uh, uh, gambling addictions and things like that. So, you know, I lost brothers uh, to gang violence and drugs and things like that. I, you know, people, you know, all my family's been to prison, you know, and, you know, I, I just, my family just had a lot of issues, you know, and with these concerns, you know, I was thinking about, you know, what that thousand dollars a month could have did for my family growing up. You know, I, I've been homeless myself. You know, I lived in motels, I lived on the streets. You know, I went. You know, I went through a lot of different situations. You know, I went to seven different high schools. I had a wow. .8 GPA growing up. Wow. You know, I went through all of that. You know, and because I had some athletic ability, I was able to persevere through a lot of these different, you know, these different situations that I had. 
And, uh, and I, I went on and I finally grew up and finally uh, learned how to, uh, you know, really mature. And I got my master's degree and I got my doctorate degree after uh -huh. that. Yeah, while playing professional basketball overseas. So, yeah, so I did all of that. So, but, you know, not everybody's as fortunate as I am exactly. to, to, to be six foot seven, 250 pounds <laughs> yeah, of muscle. Exactly. Like, <laughs> not everybody can do that, you yeah. know. So, I mean, I was just blessed. I was blessed with that, that you know, with that size and that, you know, that athleticism. So, you know, but I'm thinking about all the other people that did that wasn't weren't blessed like that. They weren't mm -hmm. blessed to have that type of muscular mass and all that, to have the athletic ability to, you know, parlay that into a scholarship, to use it as something to get out of their predicament because you know I think about people who who grew up in a situation that just don't know any better you know and people yeah. say they get mad at people all the time for not knowing any better but it's how, how do you know what you don't know exactly you know so uh, I, I don't get mad at people anymore I pity a lot of people because like man they just don't know they just don't know and I want to help as many people get out of these situations that I was in as possible see we, me and Barry were kidding about you know my son being spoiled and everything yeah but he will never have to go through the struggle that I went through. He exactly. will never have to wonder where his his next meal is coming from, where he's going to sleep at night. You know, yeah. all the different things that I had to worry about. You know, you know how how am I going to survive this situation? My first initial dream in life was just to live past the age of eighteen. Wow. You know, and, and then when I turned eighteen, it was like, all right, well, what's next? <laughs> you know, like, what's yeah. next? I made my first dream. What's next? You know, so mm -hmm. it's just I I've, I've, I've struggled all the way on up. So now, so that's why, you know, I, I got guys like Barrett and, you know, our our friend Jennifer who says, man, this guy's just ridiculously humble. Well, I've been through a lot. Yeah. <laughs> I, I've made it, I feel like. I feel like I've made it. Now, you know, I don't I don't have a lot. I've got a, you know, small house with my wife and my children, but I feel like I've made it. Yeah. Wow. That's so inspiring. <laughs> wow. You've been through a lot. Yeah. I've been through a lot. I just finished my second book. It'll be released uh, in probably around January. Um, mm -hmm. And it's a, it's a book uh, detailing my life. Uh, and all the experiences I've gone through. So it's called? It is called I Got Myself a Yard. It's called I Got Myself a Yard. Oh, really? Yeah, okay. yeah. So, yeah, the culmination of my life, you know, I'm not going to tell everybody the whole story, oh, but yeah. the culmination of my life was uh, one day I was mowing my lawn at my house in my backyard in, in South Carolina, y'all. Anybody that's uh, either knows South Carolina or been in South Carolina, mm -hmm. it'd be hot. Yeah. <laughs> it'd be hot, and it'd be like a, like a humid hot, and you'd be sweating. So I was mm -hmm. mowing my lawn one day, and uh, yeah, I was mad. I was mad about mowing my lawn. Cause I was like, man, I'm not trying to do all this mess. And I was upset. And I, was, I was in the backyard, and I was just screaming and blah, 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 blah. And then all of a sudden, I stopped. And, like, this unspeakable feeling came over me and just went throughout my soul. And I stopped, and I just started crying and crying and crying. And I started thanking God because I was like, man, I, I got myself a yard. <laughs> I, I was thinking, I said, man, I have a yard. I, yeah. I'm mad about cutting my own yard. <laughs> I've never had anything in my life. I have been homeless on the street, and I'm I'm mad about wow. cutting my yard. You just and realized right I there. I realized there. right there, everything just went through me, and I was like, yeah. man, I got myself a yard. And I cried, and thank God, and wow. thank God, and I just sat right there, and I, I mean, it was like 20 minutes of me just crying and thanking God, man. It, <laughs> I, I, I'm, so I, I'm a blessed individual, so. Wow, that wow, that was very inspiring. If nobody's drinking after this, I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. Like, no hope for you. But um, I guess I guess the last thing I'm going to end with is, what do you feel like my like the people who are watching this, which are mostly Yang Yang, what can they do more that can like help the entire process to what, make it happen? You know what what, I mean? what we really need is just people to. Because Andrew Yang, we know he's pretty much the smartest person we've ever talked to ever in life. Like when I have conversations sure. with him, it's like, oh my God, he makes me feel dumb. And I got a doctor, he makes me feel dumb. It's like, yeah. oh my God, this guy's a genius. Yeah. You know, but uh, we need to figure out. And the thing that what I've been good at is translating his message to to the common folk, you know, mm -hmm. to common people. And it's not saying that they're dumb or, or they're, that they're exactly. less than. It's just sure. breaking it down for people to understand. And I've been really good at going around the state and breaking this message down to get people to understand that, hey, we just want to put a tax on the things that people are taking from you, which is your exactly. data. You know, yeah. your data belongs to you. So we're yeah. just we're just going to give you your money back because it's your data. It's <laughs> yeah. your money. So, you know, and people usually say, oh, that makes <laughs> sense. So I've converted yeah. so many people to be a Yank Gang just thing. by breaking it down yeah. to say, hey, we're going to put a tax on the things that belong to you. It belongs yeah. to you. Yeah. So, um just tell, you know, one new person every other day and, and say, hey, you know, this is how we're going to do it. Because everybody's biggest question is, where's the money coming from? How's yeah. going to pay for that? How's going to pay for it? And then, you know, Andrew Yang, he's explained it a thousand times, but people are still aren't getting it. But once you break it down and you give that, that, peer, that peer message, mm -hmm. people 
you know, tend to change yeah. the music. Yeah? Mm, yes, that's true. Okay, I guess we're just gonna end on that. Make it a little short. I'm Jermaine yes. Johnson. So um, I'm so excited that I finally got to meet him, and you guys constantly put his name on my comments. So <laughs> this is it. This is it. It's happening. So yeah, that'll be it for this video. And um, yeah, I guess I'll see you guys in another video. Say bye. Bye, people. Bye. <laughs> bye. I'm <laughs> <laughs>